So basically, in the last video, we have talked about the question service, right? In this, we were able to add questions, delete questions. Of course, we have not tested it. That's what we are going to do in this video. But we have uh, created all these endpoints. We got all questions. We got category, add, generate. Uh, then we got get questions. And this is basically if if someone is asking for a particular question based on some question IDs. So let's say if you pass 5, 8, 12, and 13. So these are the question IDs you're passing. So what it will return is a list of questions, right? And just questions, not answers. And that's why we are using a question wrapper here. And then of course, we have also added the gets code, which will calculate this code. But the thing is, we have not tested it, right? So this that's what we want to do here. We want to test this particular uh, application. And also, since we're talking about microservice, we will be creating multiple instances of it, right? So the thing is, in the world of microservices, if you want to scale a particular service, you can do that. So example, in your application, you have five microservices, and if you want to scale, let's say one or two, you can scale them individually, right? And that's what we're going to do here. Maybe I want to run two instances of this uh, question service, right? Or maybe three instances. So how do we do that? How do we run multiple instances? That's what we'll check. Okay, so first of all, uh, let's run this code and let's see what happens. So it's already running, so what I will do is I will just restart so that if in case if it is not running on your machine, you can restart it. And one thing to observe, if you see here in the command line, it says it is 8080. So the port number where you are running this particular instance is 8080. Okay, and now I will go back to the postman. So I was doing some testing before this, uh, before recording, so I got this particular links here. So I will show you one by one. So let's say I want to get all the questions. Of course, you can get the questions from the browser as well. So if I go back to Chrome, so it is 8080, and then uh, the URL is question slash all questions. Why this URL? If you go back to your IDE, if you can see, we are saying question and then slash all questions. It will return all the questions. I just want to test that, enter, and you can see we got all the questions here. Okay, and now I will go back to Postman for testing other things. Of course, I can do all questions from here as well. So I can send a get request. So this is the get request. And if you have, if you don't have this, of course, you will not have. So you can just enter this. You can send a get request and mention this URL, which is HTTP colon double slash localhost colon 8080 slash question dot all questions. And then when you click on send, you can see you will get all the questions here. That's what we wanted, right? We got all the questions same. That's the same thing which we got in the browser, we got here. Of course, we are also sending the status code, which is 200, okay, and that's what you can see here. Okay, that's the first request, right? But if you see your uh, code, we have done some more URLs. Let's not talk about category at this point, or maybe we can do that, right? So we can say, I want uh, category Java, right? So this is a URL we want to enter. And when you say send, you can see we get all the Java questions now. Right, so these are the get request. How about the post request? I don't want to add questions. I, let's say I want to generate a particular quiz. Uh, so we can do that. But again, for that, we need to mention these two things. We'll do that later. At least we can test get questions, right? This is important. Now, if you're sending a list of questions or question IDs, I want to get the questions of it. So what we can do is we can send the get questions. And important thing is it's a post uh, thing, right? It's a post method. So if you see, we are doing post mapping. So we have to send a post method. And then here we have to say question slash get questions. But then you have to also pass a body, right? The, the list of IDs. So if you see in the code, we are accepting a list of integers here. So you have to pass them. So basically we have to pass a JSON in the array format. So we'll go to body and let's say I'm I'm passing these questions here. Two, four, seven, nine, five. You can send any numbers. You have to just make sure that you are sending this question, you know, two. So I'm sending two, four is here, and uh, seven and nine. So we got seven, nine, and five as well. So basically, remember this thing, static exception. This is what we are trying to fetch. And also, at least once, remember this, these terms, and two strings. Okay, these are the questions we will be getting. So what I will do is I will just go back there and send the request, and you can see we got this. So question number five was about static and we got it. Question number four is here. Four was about exception and we got it. Nine was about two string, we got it. Uh, five was about static, we got it. Okay, so you can see we got all the questions which we mentioned in these numbers. Of course, if you change these numbers, let's say I'm, I'm fetching three as well. So two, three. So whatever ID you mentioned, it will simply give those questions to you. So three talks about uh, uninitialized Boolean variables. Let's see, three is that question. Uh, yes, yeah. so according to our test, it is fetching only those questions which I mentioned. 
So yeah, these things are working. We can also check for get scored. But if you talk about get scored, and if you go back to the IDE, so what we're doing in get scored is, we are sending this URL, which is get scored, and this is a post mapping, thing to remember. And then we are specifying the uh, list of responses. Now what are response basically? Response has two things. One is ID and second is the answer. This is not the actual answer. This is the answer given by a participant, right? Or whoever is doing the, uh, whoever is playing the quiz. So this will be ID and any option which, which they are selecting. We just need to confirm, right? But how will you send this data? Of course, uh, from the question controller, we have to, when we are requesting for get scored, we have to pass this responses. So basically we have to send the JSON of all the responses, list of JSON, right? So I will go to get scored here. And this is the URL, right? So get scored, question slash get scored. Remember, we are working with the question service now. And that's why everywhere you will see question slash get scored. And here in the post, so this has to be post because we have to submit data, right? We have to send the questions, or sorry, the responses. Now, how will you send data? Of course, you have to go to body, and this is a response. So you can type it manually by watching it. It's very simple. You just create a array because we are sending a list, and in each element, you have a JSON response, right? So this is the ID of the question, and this is the answer which a user is sending. So this is the ID, this is the answer, this is the ID, this is the answer, and then on the back end, it will get calculated. So randomly, I'm assigning some values. In fact, we have done the same thing when we created the monolithic applications. So I'm using the same data. And when you say send, you will get a response in terms of score here. If you can see, we got three. Okay. So it says visualize. What is visualize option? No, never tried it. Anyway, so we can see we got pretty. It's, it says it is three. And uh, that's what we wanted, right? Of course, if you, out of these five questions, I guess there are five responses. Three are correct, and you can also very verify that. Let's say if I make one more mistake, let's say it is, I'm not sure if it is was four or five, I don't know the answer even. Uh, let's say for 19, what is the response? For 19, we can check for 19, the response is, the correct answer is three, okay? And uh, initially it was four, so it was a wrong answer. Let's make it right. So it should be scored, should be four now. Send, and you can see we got four. So this is working, right? And uh, that's how you basically test it. So all the URL, I mean, most of the URL are working. We have not tested for generate. We'll likely do that when we are doing uh, the quiz service. Not a good idea, but uh, I know it will work. If not, let's do debugging later. Okay, so we were able to do that with one instance, right? And the instance is at 8080, which is 8080. Now, it, it may happen that you have multiple instances, and every instance will have a different port number. How will you do that? How will you get a different port number? So what you mention here in the application.properties, and you can see by default we have not specified any port number. So default port number is 8080. If you want a different port number, you can specify here. But then I want 8080 as well, and then the new instance will be having some different port number. The way you can do that, you can run multiple instances. You can just go here on top in IntelliJ. If you're using Eclipse, you will see something like a configuration, run configuration. You can select that, and you will see an option of edit config. So just click on edit config here, and this is the by default uh, config you have. So every time you build an application in IntelliJ or any IDE, you will get a default config. We want this, but with some changes. So what I will do is, I will just copy this. In fact, you can see there's a button here, copy configuration, click this. It will create a new configuration for you. Of course, it has a different name. What we can do is we can also customize this, I think. Yeah, you can just say, instance 8081, so we are running a different port number now. But then just by changing a port number here will not work, this is just a name. If you really want to change the port number, you need to go to the modify options, and you will also see these options in IntelliJ as VM options. So when you click on modify option, you will see add VM options. You will see the same thing in IntelliJ, but not in this, oh sorry, in Eclipse, but not in this format. It will have a tab, the VM options. Just click on that and mention your option here. So the option is, you have to say D and server dot port. So this is basically how you set it. And you say equal to 8081. So now what you're doing is, you're specifying my new server port number. Server port number for this configuration is 8081. And when you say apply, okay, now you will see two options here. One is already running, right? And you can run the other one as well. So yeah, so this is, by default, 8080, this is 8081. You can click on Run Now. It will launch one more instance. So in total, you will get two instances of the same service. You can see this particular service is running on 8080. 
this one is running on 8081, right? So what you can do is you can go back to your browser. So you can say this is running on 8080 and I can just copy this URL. First try with something which is not there. So let's say 8082 is not there. So that's what you, you will get. But if you try with 8081, enter, you can see we got the data. So this data is coming from a different instance. This is coming from a different instance, right? And if you refresh, both are into running state. So we got two instances. Of course, you can run many, multiple instances and you can shut down one of the instances. Let's say I'm shutting down the 8080 now and 8081 is working. So if I refresh this, you can see 8080 is shut down now. 8081, it is still running. So that's how basically you can play with multiple instances. Now, once we have ran this, it is everything is working. What if you have a quiz service? Now, of course, once we build a quiz service, it will run on one instance, let's say some other port number, uh, let's say 80990, that's a port number we'll go for. And when you're sending a request from the quiz service to the question service, and if you have multiple instances, if you have only one instance, though, there is no issue, right? What if you have multiple instances, which, which one it will select? So that's what we want to do, right? That's the experiment we are going to do with this microservices tutorial. So that's it from this video. Uh, in the next video, let's try to build the quiz service.